Hi everybody, I am so happy you are here today to learn with me and we're going to start right on in and we are learning on solving simple equations. Our essential question for today is how are inverse operations used to solve equations? So you have hopefully learned this before and this should be a quick review. If not, welcome and this will be your first time learning it. So make sure that you are ready to go. You are going to need a pen or pencil, something to write with, your Jaguar jots starting on page three. It should say 1.1, solving simple equations at the top, a calculator, either standalone or on your computer or a phone, and as always, your problem solving skills. So let's get ready to begin. All right, so the, your Jaguar Jots page should look something like this, solving simple equations with the essential question at the top. So remember, our essential question drives what it is that we are trying to do for the day. And by the time we're done with this lesson, you should be able to solve or write a summary for that question. All right, let's get started. Inverse operations. Blank the operation so that you blank the variable. Inverse operations, what do they do? They undo the operation so that you isolate. Now, some of you might not know what isolate means. So if you were put into isolation, that means that you are put all by yourself. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the variable all by itself. So you might wanna add that reminder right here that that means all by itself. Remember, if I'm going too fast, you can pause the, the video and write that in. So some examples of what we're talking about when we are talking about operations. We mean that addition is undone by subtraction. Or multiplication. Go ahead and pause the video as you fill that one in. What is multiplication undone by? It is undone by division. Very good. So we're gonna get right into this. We're gonna to need to look at solving an example. So when we say solve, this means that you will know the value of the variable when you are done. So we wanna look at important words um, in class, we will be doing something called focus note taking, and we'll talk about that. So that's something to look forward to in our class. So a um, technique that we use or that in solving equations is something that I call putting in a road. So one of the things when you put in a road is you learn to look both ways. What we do is we put in a line at the equal sign. And we call that the road. And what it does is it just helps us to remember we have to do the same thing on both sides. So if I look at 5 plus x equals 21, we ask ourselves what happened to x to get to 21. And so right here I have this little balance here to help us remember that. And so... 5 plus x equals 21, I have to keep this balanced at all times. So if I had added 5 to x to undo the addition, I would need to subtract. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. And when I subtract 5 from both sides, make sure you put in that line. That's your equal sign. So we want to make sure we say it's equals. Put in that equal sign there, 21 minus 5 is 16, and you're done. You can check your work, and you probably should check your work. So that means x is equal to 16. We put that into 5 plus x equals 21. So 5 plus 16 equals 21. 5 plus 16 is 21. 21 does equal 21, so it checks out. Now the rest of our problems are a little more confusing because we've added complexity to it by using fractions, by using the pi, 
by using things that make it a little harder, but the problem stays the same. Again, we put in the road, and then what happened to D? D was subtracted by one fourth. So we're going to add one fourth. Now this time it requires, don't forget that line, that we know how to deal with fractions. We're gonna go ahead and do some scratch work over here. So this is our real work, and then sometimes we need to do scratch work. So negative one half plus one fourth, um, I need to multiply it by two over two, and I end up with a negative two fourths plus one fourth. You can see that there. So I end up with a negative two plus one over four. Negative two plus one is a negative one. So my answer is negative one fourth. Negative one fourth plus one fourth is zero. So I'm just left with D equals negative one fourth. So we can see that these problems continue. Go ahead and work these ones out on your own. And we can come back to those if we have time. Let's look at ones that are not using addition and subtraction. So this one here, what do I want you to do first? I want you to remember to put in the road. So you can see again, that row is going to remind us to do the same thing to both sides. And when you say what this is, when you read it out loud, it's called head speak. M divided by five. It helps you understand, oh, it was divided by five. So we're going to multiply by five. It helps you identify what you need to do next. So what are we going to do? Instead of dividing by five, we are going to multiply both sides by five. And I like to use the parentheses. So five divided by five is one. And negative four times five is 20. And again, we can go through and we can do the check work When m is equal to 20, so, oh, that's not, oh, do you see my mistake? What did I forget? This is a negative 20. So be careful with your positives and negatives. So negative 20 over five equals negative four. That is true. So be careful with that. So say this one to yourself, three times P. I know it says three P, but remember, this is really saying three times P. So how do we undo multiplication? We undo multiplication with division. So we're gonna only show our division with a fraction bar. Oh, what did I forget? I forgot something really important. I forgot my road. Again, it just helps me. It also helps me with organization. So three divided by three, this is important. Three divided by three is really one. So that's really one times P. It's important that we understand that in a way it's canceling out, it's going away, but it's really one. So P equals 27 divided by three is nine. And then we can check it. P equals nine, put that into the original. Three P equals 27. So three times nine equals 27. 27 equals 27, it worked. So you can just see that these are undoing, these inverse operations are undoing each other. So this one right here is kind of weird because it kind of looks like multiplication and it kind of looks like division at the same time. Well, this is multiplication, two fifths times M. But when I say that, two fifths 
times m. So let's write that out. 2 fifths times m. That means we're going to divide, right? By 2 fifths. When you divide by a fraction, you really what? You really multiply by the reciprocal. And that's really important that we understand that. So really, we're not going to divide by 2 fifths. We're going to end up multiplying by 2, oops, two fifths. Put in that road. So really, we're going to multiply by 2 fifths. Not 2 fifths. That is not the reciprocal. What are we going to multiply by? What's the reciprocal of 2 fifths? 5 halves. This, this is what happens when you go too fast. I need to slow down. And what I do on one side, I need to do on the other. So remember I said that the same number over itself is really 1. So 5 over 5 is really 1. And 2 over 2 is really 1. So I end up with a 1 times 1 times m. So I really end up with m on this side. And then I need to put this over 1. So now I have, on top, I have 4 times 5, because you multiply straight across, negative 4 times 5, and 1 times 2. And now I can make some choices. I can multiply and have negative 20 over 2 and then reduce. Or I can do some reducing up front and say, I know 2 goes into 4. This is up to you. This gets down to how good are your fraction skills. I'm always going to reduce ahead of time if I have that ability. I know 2 goes into itself once and into negative 4, negative 2 times. I reduced ahead of time. So now I know m is equal to negative 2 times 5 and 1 times 1 is just 1. I don't have to worry about that anymore. So m is equal to negative 10. So what this really gets down to is we now know that we can use our inverse operations to isolate the variable. But what does this solution mean? So we're going to look at this example right here. And is this a solution? So what does it mean to be a solution? Well, remember when we checked our answers, it meant that it made it true. So is this a solution? Well, what would I do? Hmm, this looks a lot like our very first example we did. What did I do with 16, x equals 16, to here? I just put it into the problem. And this is how we are always going to show our work. We're going to go x equals 16 into the original problem. This is called substitution. Okay, And that's how we're going to show substitution all year long. What is the substitution and what are we substituting it into? And then we're going to put that substitution in parentheses. So since the substitution made the equation true, it is a solution. What I'd like you to do is I would like you over here to generalize this statement. What is a solution? I'd like you to take this right here. And what I mean by generalize is I kind of want you to make a definition. What does it mean to be a solution to an equation? So a solution makes a, an equation what? Go ahead and pause it if you need to. All right, and so what did you write down? It makes an equation true. Great job, you guys. This was your very first taking notes. I am so proud of you. You guys did a great job. If you need to, remember you can go back you can rewatch things and you are doing a great job. I am looking forward to seeing you in class. One thing I would like you to do is I would like you to go back through your notes today and I want you to see if you can add anything to them that you missed and be ready to come into class and finish up any of the blanks that we have.
All right, I will see you guys again. See you later and keep on learning.